All right, everybody, welcome back to another podcast. Hope everyone is doing well. Everyone's been able to get out fishing. Um, now the weather's starting to get a little bit warmer, for at least for us northerners. We're able to get out in the water. Uh, ice fishing is is a past us, even for our, our gentleman coming on the podcast today, who uh, I will mention in a second. Um, been uh, putting in a lot of time on the water and uh, finally just got a new graph. I got an HDS9 that's coming in actually tomorrow. So by the time you guys hear this podcast, it might be two weeks from, from now. Um, but uh, yeah, I got a new HS9. I'm going to put that on the kayak. It's going to be something that's going to help me step up my game. So it's going to be something, uh, you know, look out on my social medias for me talking about it. Probably going to post a video of how I install it in my kayak. Um, I might do different videos on, you know, structure and reading that graph and different things once I get to fine tune it and uh, get out in the water and actually use it. So pretty cool. Little side note for you guys, I kind of want to add in a little bit of a snippet of my personal life real quick in the introductions before we get in the podcast. For anybody that keeps up with my personal Instagram, my social media over there, the I do get out uh, a good amount and I do catch fish for the most part. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Now we're going to get into today's podcast. Today we're having on Adam Bartuzic again uh, for the third time. Uh, we got something pretty cool that we're going to drop for uh, that he's going to announce but uh, pretty much going to check in with him, see how he's doing. Uh, and then, like I said, he's got an announcement to make. And we're going to talk a little bit about how, you know, this, what, you know, modern day is going to be like. And, you know, what the new, the new norm might be for anglers when we, when we get out of this craziness. So, hope you guys enjoy. Let's get to it. All right, we are recording. Adam Bartusik, we're back for the third time. What's going on, my man? Yeah, lucky number three. We're back. Third time's a charm. All right, we got some uh, some big news that we're gonna drop today. But uh, before we get started, you know, let everybody know if you how you how you're doing and uh, a little bit about yourself if they haven't known, uh, haven't watched the recent podcast with you already. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm Adam Bartusik. I'm from uh, New Prague, Minnesota. Live in Lakeville, Minnesota now. Uh, do a lot of different bass fishing stuff. Fish a lot of tournaments and. Uh, Basically, just a tourney junkie. A lot of people, uh, you can find me in a lot of Sam Sobiex videos, did Team Yukon Outdoors stuff back in the day. Um, yeah, just kind of been around the fishing industry for a while. Yeah, and it looks like you're trying to continue that as well because, you know, this whole corona thing is affecting a lot of people. And like myself and yourself included, we've both been, you know, we've both been laid off. I mean, we get right to the point. Uh, we've both been laid off due to this whole virus thing, but. I think you've taken this as a, a point to, you know, make some good out of it, make some transition. So, you know, we will get right right to the point here. Um, you know, do you want to tell everybody, you know, what's been going on with you and what the plan is? Yeah. Um, so kind of with me, um, like you mentioned, I, uh, well, I didn't really get laid off. I just straight up lost my job. Um, <laughs> there, there is no position to go back to for me. Uh, that is gone. So, um, and then that, that's all COVID-19 related too. That's not anything else. Um, that's kind of what I was told and what's been going on there. Why is someone calling me? <laughs> all right. Um, His man. Yeah. yeah. So that's everything that's been going on there. Actually, it might be about health insurance. So that might be important to go to here soon. But um, that, you, uh, pause, man. you can pause it and we can just continue if you need to make that call. No, I'll see what the voicemail is here in a second. I can, really just, I can really just snip it if you need to make that call, so it's really no big deal. No, I'll just kind of go through this quick, and then I'll check that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so lost my job, and then, um, yeah, basically immediately I kind of have to figure out what I'm going to do when this is all done. And in the grand scheme of things, I kind of took it as the – kick to finally just go try to figure out a way to make it in the uh, fishing industry so uh, i'm going to be starting bartusik media management um just going to be really working on uh kind of doing a combination of stuff that a lot of different people do i like having my hands in a lot of different things so kind of going one way isn't really uh the best for me i think uh, so I'm really planning on, I want to do videography, photography, um, also still going to still fish a ton of tournaments. I mean, the grand uh, goal of everything is for me to make the elites. So 
Um, still going to be working at that and then um, do a little bit of event planning. That's more in relation to, uh, fo- you know, helping clients schedule photo shoots, um, video shoots, that sort of stuff, uh, planning fishing tournaments, stuff like that, uh, and just really helping out with a bunch of different stuff. I know Shea Baker, who's been on here before, writes articles. I'm looking at maybe getting into writing some articles and helping with social media management as well. So obviously a lot of different things, and I think I'm going to try a lot of it out uh, really to start just to see what I'm good at and what I really like. Uh, Mm -hmm. But mainly uh, right now what I'm really focusing on is getting really, really good at editing again and uh, working on kind of photography and all that stuff. Sweet. So when you say how, you know, I guess more specifically these, uh, you know, event planning, uh, things like that, are you you primarily focusing your media – your media management company towards just fishing or are you going to do, are you keeping it, you know, your horizons open and pretty much doing any requests or are you just trying to stay outdoors? Um, I'll do any, but anything that pays me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but ultimately I'm going to look towards the outdoors, but there's obviously, I think more of uh, people who might reach out to me that aren't in the outdoors are probably going to be friends or family. So uh, I don't really have, tr- you know, troubles with helping out with that. Uh, I've talked to a few people about maybe maybe getting into a bit of wedding stuff uh, for videography and photography because it's always needed. Um, and yeah. if you're good at it, you're good at it. So maybe looking into that too uh, kind of scares me getting into wedding photography, to be honest, because like you got a lot of responsibility and like it's oh, a yeah. big, big, big day. Um, so I was kind of talking with Jay Siemens about that and just being like, yeah, and Jay's really good at it when he used to do it, and he was like, yeah, man, it's a blast, but, like, it's just super stressful. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, there's a lot of pressure that that is on you, you know, to get that perfect day for a couple, you know. Yeah, well, and if you lose all the footage, like, you can't redo it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you can't just say, hey, can we have the wedding again, you know? Can can we do it, get everybody together and redo your wedding? But no, it's... It's tough like that. It's not like, uh, like you said, event planning. It's not like you can, you know, take a guy out in the water and film some certain shots. You can't just, you know, go back out and do that again. That's mm-hmm. what you know. But so that essentially is what you're looking to get into: the photography, videography, and like you said, event planning. So like taking an angler, saying, "Hey, we're gonna go out on so and so lake, so we can fish this style and capture this shot." It's essentially what you're trying to get at. Yeah. Um. I mean, one of my big goals is uh i want to basically turn into like kyle uh who films for brandon uh Palinek. um kobe Palerito does it too i think for zaldane and a couple other people i don't know who kobe l does it for but uh there's you know certain videographers that follow elite anglers or flw anglers and stuff and that's uh that's what i want to do i want to you know follow those guys to their tournaments um record them and do it and you know, make that life kind of mine and do that for a bit really is what I really want to do. I kind of want that to be, you know, 25 to 50% of my business, uh, really focus on doing it. And, uh, after speaking with Jay and Sobe and a few other guys, like there's just a huge demand for guys who will do it because, uh, there's a lot of part-time videographers out there uh, with people who have other jobs that'll go do, you know, corporate shoots and stuff around, but they don't have the flexibility to just drop everything and go travel with a guy for a month. And with the elite series kind of shaping up the way it's probably going to this year, um, you're going to have like four back to back to back to back events, uh, potentially, and maybe even more. And to just drop everything and go do it, like, I'm more than willing to do that. So that's what I'm really looking at. You know, that might affect my tournament life this summer, which would suck. But in the grand scheme of things, if I got to go do that to uh, get the job done, well, I got to figure out, you know, how to get the bills paid first. Yeah, 100 percent. But I I think this is a way for you to, you know, use your creativity and actually enjoy what you're doing. You know, it's also a way for you to gain more knowledge of the industry more knowledge of fishing and ultimately like you said you know your end goal is the elite series i think this is a way for you to efficiently you know obviously live life yeah make some money but also can help you achieve that end goal 
you know, getting you to that stage that you want to be at. Um, especially, you know, if you say you're trying to go out and follow these FLW elite series, who, whomever, you know, you're, you're going to be learning a lot along the way while making great connections and, you know, obviously getting some cool experiences, you know, filming these guys. So I think it's a, it's a good step in the right direction that you're taking. And uh, I, I know this is very, this is new because obviously, you know, we spoke, a, what, a week ago? two weeks ago that that you know the whole job thing came to a close and now this is you're already you've already got your intro video out you got your mission statement essentially you know mm-hmm. what's I, like I said i know it's fresh but you know what are the the goals here is this something that you want to do for a long period of time or just something to to do until you get to the you know that that stage in the elite series that you want to be at uh yeah that's a good question um I think for me right now, this is just what the next step is. Um, what the step after that will be, I don't know. But like the grand, the grand scheme of everything is, I want to be in the elites. Like I want to fish for a living. I don't really care what it is or how I get there, or how I do it. Um, but the other thing I've found out, kind of being with Sobe. Um, and so many other guys who create YouTube content over the years is I really like uh, telling stories and Mm -hmm. I, I really like putting series together. So like a lot of these YouTube guys don't need an everyday videographer cause they can handle it themselves. Like Sobe, you know, he can handle it himself, but say Sobe goes to New Zealand for, you know, seven to 10 days. And he's mm-hmm. like, I want a videographer with to help document. And so I have someone else there. Like, let's make it really cool. Like I'm that guy. Like, that's what I want to go do and like help tell those stories. Cause what I don't want to do is go film the pond videos and you, you know, the YouTube stuff like that. It, a lot of people really like it and that's great, but like that stuff really easy to produce. And it's just like, that doesn't wake me up. Uh, get me up in the morning and really get me going what gets me going is when we're like all right all the camera gears packed we're gonna be gone for seven days let's go you know make this sweet and you just go out for like seven days and you go balls to the wall and then you get home and you sit down at your computer for like two weeks and all it is is editing and like that's super fun to me and i love doing that and i love that journey so for me that's kind of i guess what the goal is in the meantime um like I have basically weekly, monthly goals right now because it's just such uh, slow steps. But I yeah. think the biggest, the next step for me literally is uh, I just need to find, you know, someone to go do it with. Like if, yeah. if I found an elite series angler that I really wanted to film for this year and they reached out to me and were like, hey, you want to go do this? And like, yeah, got it committed. And in June or whatever, I was going down to go do it with them. Um that that would be like my goal for the next like three or four months that happened goal accomplished then we figure out more yeah yeah i think i think you're definitely take i think your interests are in that cinematic approach uh like whereas you said you know the pond fishing you know you you can easily just strap a chesty on and talk to your your gopro the whole day and, and fish and make those videos but what you're really going for what your interests are is like you said that series you know where you're going to be making part two, three, four, however many different parts in that series, but you're doing it in a, a sit, like you're putting together a, like a movie essentially, you know, it's yeah. not just a YouTube video. It's something that is professionally done is what you are looking to gear yourself towards. And yeah, I always like when I put something out, I want people to see it and be like, holy shit. Like that was yeah. cool. Like I, yeah. I want people like that. What Sam and I've talked about a lot is uh, when I put stuff out, I want people to feel something. Like, cause when I watch videos and I'm like, oh, cool, whatever, I learned something like that's neat or whatever. But like, um, I think of like Colton Kramer produced a video for Spencer Samplowski that was on the Sims fishing Instagram within the last month, um, about Spencer. It was like a five minute video. And like, I texted that to a couple buddies and I was like, this is one of the best videos I've ever seen, Mm. you know? It's just like, it makes me feel something. And uh, that's what I try to do with all my stuff. And like, I'm a perfectionist big time and probably to a fault. That's why I'm a very good event planner and like organizer of stuff like that. And when I sit down to edit, like I don't put stuff out just to put it out. I put it out because I believe it's, you know, worthy of going out. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. I think, 
Yeah, there's you, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Essentially what I guess you're trying to gear yourself towards, and obviously you're going to have different avenues that you're going to take it on, but I, I don't know if you follow Tanner or Travis Lyons. No. So they do they do work for like Luke Duncan, John Hunter. They make kind of that that I guess you call your your up your higher scale videos, mm-hmm. your, your more cinematic stuff. I, I don't know if you know who John Hunter is. Uh, he, he's like an FLW uh, Toyota Series angler, and I believe he fishes the Opens as well. Um, but essentially, he's trying to get to the Elite Series. But he has a YouTube channel that these guys come in. They're they're brothers. They're twin brothers down in Texas. And they film some videos. I'll, I'll just share their stuff to you. Um, but I think that's kind of in line of what you're looking to do. And I, I've, I've spoken with a few different elite guys. And I think I have one that, you know, offline will talk and I'll throw some names at you just to see if there's even potential for you. Um, but that's kind of essentially what you're, what you're looking to go at. But um, is it, you know, you're looking to go for, to work for just anglers or are you kind of trying to keep yourself open to even like for companies to hire you to kind of make, you know, different, you know, marketing videos or something like that. Yeah, I'll do, uh, like I said before, I'll do yeah. anything. Like, yeah. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta get paid. Um, yeah. And yeah, I've worked with companies a lot before. I've had a few reach out to me already. Um, and I'll probably be doing some work for a handful. But like I, I really want to work with people. And, um, you know, working with companies, you can work with people and like do certain things that are really cool. Um, and I will do a bunch of, you know, corporate, whatever videos, I I know what you have to do and what you do to kind of get the job done. What pushes me to get into this and really go along with this is like the storytelling and working with people. And that's what, uh, I think the fishing industry in general is turning into it. Um, you know, you have tournaments and everything, which are one way, and then you have education, but like, there's a lot more storytelling going on and the fishing and outdoor industry in general, just think about how many times you sit around a fire, sit at a bar, and all you do is tell stories for like four or five hours. Oh, like it's God. it's the number one storytelling sport or whatever out there because yeah. it's normally you and a buddy. Like there's not a whole team of 50 people that are watching or doing yeah. it. Like it's just you guys. So it's stories and capturing those stories, and that's what I really like. Yeah, and naturally, if you're if you're a fisherman, you're a storyteller. <laughs> kind of <laughs> goes hand in hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, with that being said, I mean, I know it's it's fresh. I know it's early, um, but I have two questions for you. And the first question is, you know, obviously, you want to get to the elite series. You want to fish a, a lot of tournaments. You know, how are you planning on balancing, you know, these projects with, you know, obviously, you want to do well in these tournaments to get to that stage. So you're gonna have to have time set aside to prepare. You know, is it just going to be crazy time management or do you have kind of a plan in place? Well, I mean, like this is my full time job now. So basically, I just look at it like I'm going to work the same day as I would have been working my other job, you know, and like it's not a nine to five or an eight to four anymore. It's like if I have to sit down and edit for, you know, 20 hours in a row, I'll edit for 20 hours in a row. Um, just grind do- yeah, do whatever I do to get it done. But like, I quite I what I'm kind of lucky about, honestly, is I'd already sent in most of my tournament registrations for the year. Um, so like Tourney Tuesday with Sobe was already taken care of, uh, Team Trail, the Blackfish tournament, and stuff like that. So in Minnesota, it sounds like we're still going to be able to have tournaments. We'll find out more by about May fourth, which we're really hoping we will. But uh, those weekends I already got handled and paid for and basically what it comes down to at that point is like am i going to be overlapping with elite events if i have to go do it for work uh that's kind of what's going to be harder to figure out and uh, who knows maybe other opportunities come up where i'm filming something else over the summer and i don't have to worry about going to do that uh elite or flw contract until september or whenever maybe a certain amount of events but um yeah, I, I obviously I want to fish tournaments, and I'm gonna make sure I get to fish the ones I want to fish. But I, I might have to sacrifice fishing a couple just to do this. But, yeah. but that's fine. I, I know yeah. what I have to do, and um, if I'm doing this as my full time job, kind of in the future, I'm gonna be able to go fish like tournaments in Alabama and stuff, uh, rather than just having like my three or four month season in Minnesota. 
I can uh, I can go dabble in other states and do other things to get the job done. Yeah, yeah. And while one thing that's could be interesting for you is while you might have to sacrifice some tournaments, at least in the state of Minnesota, or near like your nearby states, you know, essentially if if you get to working with say a pro, you, an elite series pro, you're traveling around with him. I mean, I don't know if you're planning on you know taking your boat with you or not, but if you do. You, know, you could hop in on tournaments in different states, different areas, which could be kind of cool because it could help you prepare for fishing in different areas around the country for when you do get to that stage of the elites, if you if you if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of the way I've looked at it. Um, I don't know if I'll drag around my boat the first year, just kind of more of a go follow along and do and just kind of learn to because this is going to be a learning experience for me as well, but. I know like Aaron, my buddy Aaron and I are still planning on fishing the ABT 100 series next year in uh, 2021 um, registrations in like a month and a half, I think. So what's cool about that is like now when I go down there in January to uh, when I go down there in January to fish that first ABT 100, like right after New Year, like I legitimately just might hop in my boat and truck and drive to Florida for the next month like might not come back to minnesota which whatever <laughs> like be awesome so that's yeah. that's the kind of stuff you know that's exciting for me is i i'm gonna be able to go do that stuff and uh really push it and pursue it and in the grand scheme of things all my life now is gonna be really is uh if i'm not fishing i'm filming and if i'm not filming i'm probably fishing a tournament and then uh, maybe some vacations with friends and stuff, but I'll get to capture it with a camera. And I've just kind of learned uh, how much I've missed it too since I left TYO. So uh, really pushing to go do it myself is kind of getting the gears rolling. And I guess the scariest thing is just figuring out like, yeah, it sounds great and it's really exciting. And uh, right now I'm just getting paychecks on unemployment. So that's really nice. But you know, when the end of May hits or like, I, I have a job booked for the end of May. So like, that's my time frame right now. It's like, I have to find enough jobs to sustain me then and then keep finding jobs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that, that's Make the thing. Yeah, yeah. Like stuff has to keep coming in. I can't just be like, Oh, I'm good. You know, I have to keep pushing for work. So yeah, it's just a whole new thing that, uh, I don't know. I'm excited for. Yeah. I remember our first time you know, when you were on the podcast and it was, we were pretty much learning about your story getting into it. And you had, you had first talked about how you used to get into editing with you, was you and Sam learning how to edit, get crazy at editing and how you had attempt, you had initially planned on starting essentially a YouTube channel. Once you, you know, embarked on the opens and that journey towards the elite series. And then you were like, yeah, I'll do it eventually. But it looks like uh, that time is, you know, spawned on you a lot a lot yeah. earlier than you would expect i think we hit it i think we hit eventually <laughs> um, <laughs> That's uh, cool. yeah that happened quickly but uh yeah. yeah i'm not really focusing on my own youtube content right now i'll probably make some um once i get more comfortable with self-filming and stuff like filming that video of my story was way more difficult than people probably thought it was like telling a story about yourself is very hard because you have to be very selfish and humble about it and like it's just very weird yeah, yeah. and like i'm working on a story about chad smith right now and uh like that's super easy and it's fun because like i know chad i know what i want to yeah. do like i texted him today and i was like hey we got to get back out for a few more shots I want a couple pieces of audio to use and a couple different things. So like, I already know what Chad's video is going to look like. I had no idea what my video was going to look like. Like, and that's what's weird. Um, so making my own YouTube content, I probably will. And honestly, I'm probably going to gear that around uh, my tournaments. I'll probably get a couple GoPros, just toss them on the boat. Cause it's really easy. It's not mm -hmm. hard to do. And uh, focus it around practice and then tournament day and just kind of put out some YouTube videos there. Because then when I go down to Alabama and Florida and stuff, um, I'll probably focus on putting out maybe a video a week. Probably not more than that. Um, that's not going to be my sole income. And, like, it's so saturated. So it's oh, really gosh. hard to get into that. 
I just more of want to help other people create that content. But I know I also have to have a YouTube presence. So if people like creep on me for work, like they got to they got to see stuff. So like I have to make like a business Instagram and Facebook here. But if people want to know me, go check out my personal Insta. Like that's who you're going to hire and who you're going to get, you know? Yeah. So that that being said, though, I mean, you said you had a project coming up. Are you allowed to announce, you know, your first project or what's coming up for in store for you? Oh, at the end of May. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just it's like a three to five minute promo video for a Twin City uh, tournament circuit. They want me to do oh, something, cool. so I was awesome. like, yeah, sure, let's do it. Um, but yeah, other than that, like I have calls with people, and you know, a lot of people reach out to touch base and stuff. So just kind of seeing. Um, just need to get more of a portfolio out there for people to kind of bite. Um, that's why I'm working on something with Chad Smith right now. Like that's yeah. going to be really cool. So that'll be uh, really good. So yeah. I'm, I'm working on that. I'm hoping I want to have it done by next week. Um, I'm waiting on a bit more video content basically, but once I have it done, I'm going to be either Chad's going to be posting or I'm sending it to Bassmaster. I don't know which one's going to post. I'm going to talk to Ronnie more and Ronnie might want to. Go. Oh, that's a good guy to get in touch with for sure. Yeah. Ronnie and I play Call of Duty like every, night, every yeah. night. Yeah. We play so much Call of Duty together. <laughs> I, I see his story updates of uh, his how he places in Call of Duty mm-hmm. and everything. And yeah, we play like, all I, the time. Yeah. We've basically. probably played four to five nights a week for the past month <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> and i'm slowly getting sick of cod so and the weather's getting nice here so i'm probably going to start getting off of that grind yeah yeah speaking of nice weather that usually means you can get out and fish but unfortunately for you guys that's not the case yeah mm-hmm. so uh, we're not allowed well we're allowed to fish we're not allowed to fish for bass <laughs> yeah um, so bass season's closed in minnesota all sports fish are so uh you can't fish for largemouth smallmouth northern pike walleye musky um musky is probably a good one to have off to be honest but like yeah the bass one's stupid because every state around us is open right now so you'll see a lot of posts from guys from around here they're just driving to wisconsin or iowa south dakota whatever and you know normally that's fine but like i don't think there's any other time than like now has shown us why having a closed bass season is really stupid because uh minnesota is preaching like go outside have fun you can go golfing use all our state parks and like people are really using it minnesota's got one of the lowest infection rates in the country like we're killing it to be honest we're doing really good and uh stuff's starting to open back up slowly and it's been fine everyone's doing what they're doing but the thing that sucks is other states around us are not And we have to go there to bass fish or do whatever. So you're having to drive two or three hours to go fish a lake just because I just want to get my bass boat wet. uh, And I don't want to fish for crappies. So, you know, I've made the sacrifice the last few weeks of just chilling at home uh, and not going anywhere and kind of seeing how everything goes. But, yeah, I just really wish it was open. I know, like, me and a handful of other people reached out to the DNR and were like, hey, can you, like, just open for catch and release so we don't have to drive to Wisconsin? And uh, people were like, oh, you're supposed to stay in your community. And I was like, dude, I'd drive 10 minutes from my house if I could fish for bass there. Like, I just can't. So every every single state around us, you can fish for bass. Um, it just sucks. So, like, I know, Michi- I know Michigan's pretty pissed right now because they can't take out boats and everything. Yeah. But uh, at, at, least you can, at least you can shore fish for a bass. Like, we, we can't even do it here. Yeah. So, uh, they at least can take the kayaks out and everything. Yeah, and you can take kayaks out yeah. and go for bass. Like, dude, I can't even cast for a bass. So yeah. uh, I, I have to drive. I actually was texting my buddy, and um, I think I'm going to go – I think I'm going to go to his place up in – far away wisconsin and i'm basically just going to camp in his yard for a few days and go. Uh, go fish here just so that i can get away from the cities and that's the other thing i'm just going stir crazy so i need to go to cabin country or something and just listen yeah. to some podcasts and music and chill out and kind of hit the reset button uh yeah. from just being stressed forever take a breath yeah 100 percent, especially being cooped up i don't blame you but the Correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a, I believe I signed a petition for 
this to to be changed, right? For Minnesota to allow catch and release. Yeah, there is a petition somewhere. I, it might be on Josh Douglas's Instagram. It might be on Chad Smith's. That's um, where I saw it was Josh's. I, I don't know whose it is. Someone was posting it and started going around. Um, if anybody else wants to sign it and do it, go for it. I signed it. Um, I don't I really know if it's going to do anything, but it, it won't do anything for this year, For but maybe for future seasons because – the regulations Minnesota has on bass is just stupid. Like smallmouth end in the middle of September and with uh tournament season kind of going the way it's gonna this year and stuff maybe getting pushed back. Um, like I, I don't understand why we can't fish smallmouth tournaments in the fall. Like if we could hold smallmouth tournaments in uh, September and October and even the beginning of November, which like you're not harming any fish at that point in time because the water's so cold. Uh, like you would see crazy weights. You'd see dirty thirties around here pretty often on a couple lakes. Mm-hmm. So it stinks. Um, I hope it changes. I hope people reach out and go do something about it. I'm hoping for next year, maybe something will happen. I know Wisconsin just finally did their catch and release season this year. And it's been awesome. Like they got people out enjoying the outdoors. And uh, I think fishing license sales are up like people just enjoying it. So I hope Minnesota sees that and they kind of follow suit. There's just not really a reason for bass not to be open because they say it's for the spawn. And like we open the beginning of May, all our fish spawn May 15th through June, June 15th. Like they already get hit. (laughs) And so they're not doing anything. They're just allowing us to not pre-spawn fish, which sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I'll do is I'll I'll dig up that petition and I'll link it down below for anybody who's going to can help out. But I'm hoping that that petition stuff actually works because they try to do that here in New York. They try to close off every launch to all boats and kayaks, whether a state, you know, our, our fish and wildlife launches, whatever it was, unless it was private, it was getting closed to everybody. Um, and essentially when that news kind of floated around, people started to petition for them not to do it. It got a crazy amount of signs. And basically they came out and said, you know, we're, we're not, we're going to keep everything open. You know, we're not going to close them after they went and said they were going to close them for a couple of days. But essentially, they didn't do that, um, thankfully. But I, so I hope that can kind of help push Minnesota towards opening that, at least for next year, um, and and further, you know, years moving forward. Just because you know, when you realize the the magnitude of people who are against your ruling, you know, it's a question. You make your you make yourself question of, is that the ruling we have in place need to be changed? Oh so well, hope, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. that can help. So the people are for listening me still. Is- I guess a small business owner now, like next year in the spring, when I got to produce content, like I'm not going to be here. (laughs) Why would I be here for March and April? Like there's literally no reason for me to be here. I'm going to go to Wisconsin. I'm going to go to Iowa. I'm going to go to South Dakota, go to Missouri, go wherever. Cause I can go produce content. (laughs) Our ice got out here three or four weeks ago. I could have been putting out largemouth and smallmouth content for the past month, and yeah. uh, I just can't. So it yeah, sucks. It sucks. Well, yes. and the Mississippi River's open, but like it's been flooded. Now it's yeah. now it's okay, but like I also hate, don't like fishing the river that much. So, yeah. well, well, dude, I just gotta say I'm really happy for you. I know it's it's tough position to be in, but at the same time, I'm happy for you. I'm excited for you to see what's to come and. Excited to watch these tourney videos you're going to pump out, the different projects you're going to make. Uh, I'm rooting for you, so you know you got my support. But, uh, you know, it's not it's not a long podcast today for everybody watching, listening, but uh, uh, this was important to not only you, but myself as well to help support you because we all got to support each other, especially in these, these times. But, you know, media is always going to be a demand, and uh, especially for those who have the talent for it, which you do. So pretty excited to see what you do with it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. If anyone knows of anyone, just tell them to slide in my DMs. I'm uh, I'm open. I'm open for anything. It's available, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, man. You have any uh, last remarks before we we hop off here? No, I got nothing. All right, man. Will you take it easy? Stay safe. Stay healthy, and uh, we'll talk soon. Yeah, for sure. Sounds good. Thanks, dude. All right, man. Take care. Peace. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that podcast with Adam. Uh, it's always a blast and a pleasure to have him on to talk to him about different things. And I had to support him, get him on here again so he can drop some news for you guys on his media project he's creating, his little 
his media management company, as he calls it. Um, this is a demand that is rising in the fishing industry and not even the fishing industry, really in, in any industry that can, you know, suffice a, um, an individual or a company or a group that needs videographers, photographers, people who can put these different cinematic uh, lights on certain things, certain avenues. Um, and he's a good guy for it. Uh, he's very talented. Um, I'm really excited to see what is to come of it. I think he's going to go places with it, and I hope he gets to the goal where he wants to be, and that is making the Elite Series. Um, cannot wait to see him reach that level. I know with his determination, his mindset, he's going to get there. Um, I have full confidence in him. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Go down in the description and follow him on all, his, all of his social medias and check out his media page. You guys do not want to miss out on this. This guy is, is the man. He's very talented. Uh, like I said, it's going to go places, so I'm pretty excited to see what's going to happen there. Um, so thank you guys again for listening and for watching. Like I said, go down to Adam's pages linked below. Follow him. Give him some, some support. And, uh, yeah, just thank you guys again for listening and for watching. Subscribe to the Ipert Outdoors YouTube channel. You can find the podcast on that YouTube channel, or you can listen to us on any podcast app like Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the Angler app pretty much everything out there. So thank you guys again. Appreciate you all. Hope you guys are staying safe, staying healthy. We'll see you guys next time.